son. Say you like sir. I can't do a thing this morning. I'm as jumpy as a cat. Yeah. A big mug if you get to bed at a decent hour. You... Yeah, but you should have seen that blonde. Yeah, blondes, redheads, a different one every night. Of course, I know it's your own business, Bob, but... And what a business. But if you'd only use your head once in a while. I do. I never forget an address, a phone number, or the kind of cigars that old man smokes. But you do forget you have a pretty dangerous job. I don't have to remember that. The boss does it for me. It's a funny thing, though. The only time I have to catch up on my sleep is when we're up in the air together. Yeah, that's just it. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Fleming. Oh, hiya, boss. Afternoon, boys. This is Mr. Pierce, our vice president. I do. Our test pilots, Bob Wilson and Fred von Bergen. Von Bergen? Uh, German? Yes, sir. Citizen? No, sir. Why not? Well, he has his first papers. First papers, eh? Oh, Fred's all right. I've known him for years. The ship ready to go up? Any time. All right, roll her out. Okay, we'll get the boys. This is her final test. Uh, is this Wilson a German, too? No, he's mostly American. <laughs> With some crazy Irish mixed in. <laughs> Another good plane for the Germans to crack up. Don't pay any attention, Bob. Hey, what'd that mechanic mean? Some private feud, I guess. Yeah, but what about crack-ups? Oh, we have a few. Last week, two smashed up. It wasn't the boys' fault, though. Yeah. There is such a thing as deliberate destruction. Impossible with those two boys. The ships just weren't strong enough for the sort of flying Bob gives them, that's all. But Fred will find out why they weren't. He has that German genius for sticking to a problem until it's solved. They've been together ever since they were kids. Reception committee. Oh, never mind. Better luck next time. Are you fellas all right? Well, my my back teeth are a little loose. What happened? I think it's in the construction of the struts. I'd like to see how they're assembling these ships. Now, if I could spend a week in a factory. That's enough. Let's get back to the office. So, you want to go to the factory, huh? It's safer to crack them up before they leave the ground, eh, Heine? Bob! Mr. Fleming wants you two in the office. There ought to be a law against eyes like yours. You know what they do to me? Shall I tell you? Ah, oh, no, no, no. This isn't the place for it. What are you doing tomorrow night? Nothing. Ah, uh, yes, you are beautiful. You're going to be very, very busy. Say, uh, what about a friend for my pal Fred over here? Uh, Bob, uh, leave me out of it, please. Uh, I'm busy tomorrow night. Well, it's a date, beautiful. 8.30, your house. All right. For you. Go right in. I'll bring the ice. Hey. Why do you always say no? You're only young once. I know what I'm doing. 
Awfully sorry we cracked up another ship, Mr. Fleming. But you see, that strut seemed to... Just a moment, Bob. I'm sorry, Fred, but I must ask for your resignation. But why? It wasn't his fault the plane cracked up. I'm the one that tears them apart. That has nothing to do with it. It's a new rule. Mr. Pierce's idea. He thinks that Fred, coming from Germany... Why, he's more American than I am. Well, there's nothing personal, boys. It's just that we're making planes for the Allies. Yeah, and he thinks that Fred might be yellow enough to crack him up. Well, the old... Please, Bob. I understand, Mr. Fleming. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, so am I. Because you're going to have to find yourself a new test pilot. Now, don't be a sap, Bob. There's no reason for you to quit. Yeah, and there's no reason for them to ask you to quit. I won't work for a firm that fires a man just because he happens to have a German name. Wilson and Von Bergen, eh? Von Bergen? We don't employ Germans here. Mr. Burton will see you now, Mr. Wilson. Oh, thanks. Come on, Fred. Oh, excuse me. Uh, not Mr. Von Bergen. Just you, Mr. Wilson. What? I don't know anything about it, only uh, he was talking to your old boss on the phone this morning. Yeah? Well, tell him to go jump in the lake. Come on, Fred. We'll fly for American aircraft. Their gain, Burton's loss. Make a note of that. Sorry, no one will pass you in. Now, listen. Mr. Hayward's been after me for the past six months to go to work for him. Send our names in, he'll see us. Save your breath. No jobs, no admittance. No brains. All right. Well, we gave them their chance. Thank goodness we have nothing to worry about. Papa's insurance will take care of us for a long time. Don't even think of it, Mama Von Bergen. We have all kinds of offers. It's just a question of which one we want to accept. Isn't it, Fred? No. Fred. No use, Bob. I'm not going to lie any longer. Mama might as well know the truth. But it isn't the truth entirely. Just because a few idiots are prejudiced against Germans at the... Prejudice? Is that why you haven't been able to find a job? Well, if I'm not the prize, that. Here I try to keep you from telling, and I tell myself. Oh, kick me, will you? <laughs> oh, it's all right, Bob. I was going to tell anyhow. In the first place, there's no reason you're being out of work on my account. But there are plenty of spots where they've taken you without me. Oh, I wouldn't work for them. We'll stick together like we always have. I'm afraid we won't be able to much longer. Why not? I'm going back to Germany. <gasps> oh, son! I'm sick of being insulted, called a Hun and a Heine. This is my country. I love it. I die for it. But if they don't want me here, I'll go back to the place where I know I'm wanted. The country where I was born. The German use of the war. They'll make you a soldier. That's not for you. That's not for anyone who isn't made to go. But don't you see, Mama, I, I am being made to go. What are you going to do, Bob? Oh, I don't know. It'd be kind of hard for Mama Von Bergen to see me having my usual good time when you're away at war. That's right. Hey, why did you pick out the night to leave? I've got a date with Fleming's secretary. Don't let me interfere. Well, I... I guess I'll be going. Good night, Mama Von Bergen. See you at the station, Fred. Mama, Mama. Don't cry. You see, it, it can't be helped. My son. 
My little boy. For centuries they've taken you away from us. For centuries we have wept over you. We who have nursed you and cried over your little childish bruises and scratches. You must let you go to be maimed, killed. For something we can't understand. All aboard. I've, uh, I've been expecting a fellow by the name of Bob Wilson. If, if he shows up, will you give him this? Yes, sir. Thanks. I know, but I'm on my way. <laughs> Boy, won't I be a knockout in a German uniform. Sending you to the front immediately. Squadron 22, for some very important reasons, needs the best flyers available. You will accompany Lieutenant Lombardi. That is all. And good luck. I kissed her by the yard and every other measure. And when I got through kissing her, the poor girl died of pleasure. Boy, unhand that velocity. From now on, I'm driving this thing. But it is against orders, sir. Does it say somewhere in the book that you're to drive me nuts also? Be reasonable, Bob. It's pretty serious breaking up equipment in wartime. He's under orders to take it easy. Yeah, well, what this war needs is fewer orders and more laughs. Come on. Orders and discipline make an army. Discipline. I'm sick of the word. I'm going to show these wooden heads how to get a few laughs out of this scrap. Come on, handsome. Scram. Move over. Get the tight one. Get over there. Well, boys, here's mud in your eyes. Well, take it easy, Bob. Stand there gaping, you half witted goony. Do something. What are you waiting for? Orders from the general staff? Will you spill some of your best German on that crack brain, addle headed nitwit? <laughs> Please don't stop, Lieutenant. Well, if I'm unconscious, let me stay that way. Please. Please, won't you throw us a rope? In a minute. Please to pull out her, Lieutenant. Oh, okay. Oh, pardon, Fraulein. <laughs> hey, how about getting me out of here? <laughs> Lieutenant Bob Wilson, a little muddy, but at your service. Well, I'll be seeing you.
There ought to be a law against eyes like yours. Lieutenant. You know what they do to me? Shall I tell you? I'm not at all interested. Oh, uh, they do it just the same. Every time I come home from the front after a hard siege of fighting, I'd say to myself, now, if I only had a gal like you... You've it... never been to the front. How do you know? I've seen too many come back. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, I'm afraid you'll have to give us a lift. Our motorcycle is done for. Well, I'll drive you to your destination. Have your man tie the motorcycle on behind. Thank you. Come on. He'll need your help. Well, I... Well, there's no room up front. You'll have to ride inside. Nine. I have yet not to ride in the ambulance. I do not start now. Suit yourself. Here, wrap these around you. You must be soaked through. It's, uh... It's going to be tough going with that motorcycle in the rear. Don't you think you better let me drive? I will. You know, I don't think I've had sleep for a week. Well, you can rest your head on my manly shoulder while I do the dirty work. <laughs> uh, move over, Freddy. I'm trying to keep out of the shell holes. A malicious remark, sir. Don't you suppose I know a precious cargo when I see one? Bergen, reporting for duty, sir. Lieutenant Bob Wilson. I'm Captain Volders. Obviously, you are not German. No, sir. American. A rather dirty American. What? Clothes don't make the man, sir. We had an accident, sir. Our motorcycle was wrecked. Oh, that's unfortunate. The driver will be severely punished. Unless you can explain satisfactorily. Well, he, well, he wasn't a... It was really my fault, Captain Bogdan. Then I prefer not to ask for any explanation. It will be reported as an unavoidable accident. Thank you, Fräulein. Same here, Fräulein. Uh, just a minute. There's something very important I want to ask you. Yes? Now, uh, when and where do I see you again? Who knows? Uh, tonight? Thank you. No. Oh, now, wait a minute. Is that nice? Here I am, ready to give my all to your country, and you won't even give me a little date. I'm sorry. Well, uh, shall we make it tomorrow night? Yes. Okay, that's settled. Tomorrow night. Well, so long. See you later. Better hurry. Hey, try and find out from her how I got over. Lieutenant, one moment. Your friend is very sure of himself, isn't he? He doesn't mean any harm. You're very loyal. We've been friends a long time, Fräulein. I'm always in the canteen at 10 for a cup of coffee. Do you like coffee? Fräulein, I... do. Until 10, then. Hey, did you give me a good send-off with the dame? Fräulein Hoffman is a lady. I wonder if she has a friend uh, for you. You Americans are very gallant. Yes, sir. We learned it in school along with cooking and needlework. No, thank you, sir. Rather amusing. 
having an American in the squadron. You see, my best friend was shot down by an American, the Lafayette Escadrille. Interesting, isn't it? Very. I think it would be advisable for the lieutenants to change into clean uniforms before the flight arrives. Orderly will show you to your quarters. This way, up to stairs the case, please. Where do we go? Up to the head from the stairs case, please. Up to the head from the stairs case, please. Oh, what a war. What a war. <laughs> well, Bob. Well, this is home for a while, anyway. Oh, These are terrible quarters. I'll tell the manager what I think of this place. Hello? Uh, send me up a chambermaid. Yeah, right away. Ah, there's service for you. Thank you very much. You're welcome very much. What's your name? Friedrich Wilhelm Robert Himmelbaum. Well, Himmelbaum, you may go. Please, sir, I may not go. First, I have to fix your uniform. Span and speak. Well, here, uh, span and speak this. And dust this off. <laughs> Gentlemen. Two new additions to our little problem in mathematics. Lieutenants von Bergen and Wilson, Lieutenant Schoenberg. Welcome, gentlemen, to the Devil's Playground. Lieutenant Meyer. You've been told before not to make these sketches. See what I meant by our mathematical problem. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen. Thirteen from fifteen is uh, two. Our mathematical problem is not very difficult today. Nothing more than a simple subtraction to arrive at the number of planes shot down. Excuse me? I wonder if any of them burned as they fell. Attention. The next time you lose your place in formation, you will be transferred to the trenches. I'm sorry, Major. And you, von Muller, since when are you so stupid you can't even make a simple landing? Germany cannot afford to lose planes needlessly, and to wreck them on the ground is absolute disloyalty. It will not happen again, sir. As you were! Can you do it? That was horrible. A line of duty, sir. I wish I'd been a little easier on him. It had its effect on the other men. That is all that matters. Perhaps. But when I die, 
I hope it isn't while I'm being reprimanded by a superior. Gentlemen, allow me to introduce two new members, Lieutenants Wilson and Von Berten. Gentlemen, to the new members. May they live like German gentlemen and die like German officers. Lieutenant Wilson, Lieutenant von Bergen, Major wishes to see you. Lieutenant von Bergen reporting for duty, sir. Lieutenant Wilson. Your papers? It should please you to know that you have been assigned to the most active squadron on the front. We are a defensive patrol, guarding the largest concentration of munitions in this sector. Gentlemen, you have many difficult days ahead of you. That will be all. Nice guy. And a great soldier. Yeah. I bet they sprinkled these mush with gunpowder when he was a kid. I need men, flyers, and they send me a boy who hasn't even a good reason for fighting in Germany. What sort of a flyer will he make? Perhaps it won't make any difference after his first flight. Walters, I haven't your insatiable appetite for death. It is one thing to kill for one's country, another to just kill. Get those men up in the air with the rest of the squadron tomorrow at dawn. Let them have leave tonight. Prompt, Lieutenant. Well, I thought 10 o'clock would never come. How you must like coffee. Coffee? Oh, it, it's so noisy in there. Isn't there some place where we can talk quietly? Noise is good for us. Maybe we'll find something to laugh at. Son of a gun. My mother. Oh, she's very sweet. Thanks for showing it to me. No other pictures? I didn't know any girls in America. I expect Lieutenant Wilson has quite a collection of pictures. The lieutenant is to report at once to the captain, please. I... I may be only a few minutes. Would you, uh, wait for me? Perhaps.
<laughs> Hello. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? We're supposed to know how to repair these gadgets if anything goes wrong. Well, at least you managed to get it apart. <laughs> That's something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me show you. Now look. You put this here. And then you connect this. <laughs> Pardon, Fallen Hoffman. Thanks so much. It was nothing. Is there anything else? Look at your hand. Come in. With the compliments from the Captain Wolders. What's wrong with it? Nothing, sir. I drew it myself. You can present my compliments to the Captain and tell him to... to... Uh, to accept these as an indication of my esteem. Sir? To him. To him, sir? Yes. What a walk, what a walk. It's wrong for you to be mixed up in all this. You're too gentle, too sensitive. What about the men who are too sensitive? They're doing their share, aren't they? But war is a man's work. Women should be sheltered, protected. You think we have no place to fill but that? Well, no, no, I don't mean that. I, I think that whatever you do is right. I shall always think so. I'm afraid you're being kind. No. It's just that you're the girl I've waited all my life to meet. No. You must be. It's true. And I want you to believe it. Don't you think we'd better walk along now? Hello, honey. Need any help? I... I was looking for Alida Hoffman. She's off duty. You'll find her in the garden. Thanks very much. Alida. I wonder if you understand. It isn't the war, the sudden hysteria. It's... It's no flirtation with me. I want you to be my wife. Please, I can't think of such things now. Well, go ahead, say it to my face. I hope I'm not intruding. Not at all. Well, if you'll excuse me, I... Oh, please don't go away mad. But go away. <laughs> there goes the swellest guy in the German army. The only thing wrong with him is me. He even takes me seriously. And you take nothing seriously. I wonder. How is your little black book of names getting on? Quite filled by now, I suppose. You think I'm a conceited fool, don't you? No. Just a little boy who whistles to forget the dark. You're a sweet, Alita. No wonder Fred is crazy about you. Fred will get over it. Fred told me that you'd both been up with the squadron. Yeah. I had my first trip on the Glory Trail. And? Not so hot. Tell me. I guess I'm not much of a hero. I don't know, I don't know what it was, but... Maybe I lost my nerve. But I couldn't shoot down a helpless man. I'm glad. Oh, I suppose I shouldn't say that. I suppose I should tell you to go up and fight for my country. 
but I can't. It, it all seems so senseless. I'd better get back to the squadron. They'll be going up. No, no, you can't. Um, Alito, what's the matter? You mustn't go up. You'll get hurt. Would it matter to you? Yes. Nothing's going to happen to me. And you'll be all right here. I don't care about myself. Bob, don't you understand what I'm trying to tell you? What time is it? Five or two. Goodness, I had no idea. I was supposed to be on the road at twelve. All right, coming. I'll feed it in. Hey, where is everybody? In the air, sir. You know, Captain Volders was very angry at the lieutenant's absence. Oh, I'll hear plenty about this. If the lieutenant will pardon me, it's a very serious offense. Disgrace, sometimes execution. There was one about... the squadron. We could have used you this morning. Even one like you would have been of some value. If for nothing else than to get in the way of the bullets that brought down the Baron. The Baron? Yes. Explain your absence! If you can! I... I was detained, sir. By what? By something which concerns only me. I will explain what detained you. It was cowardice. You were hiding, afraid to return to the base in time to go up, afraid to die. I could have you court-martialed, but instead I choose to give you another chance. I need every man I can get, even one like you. You will fly with us. Dismissed! Well? Where were you? With a leader. I couldn't tell them. I might have known it. What do you mean? All your life you've messed around with women. Your kind of women. Now you meet a girl that's decent and fine, and you try to make her like the rest of them. You don't understand. This isn't the usual love affair. You're not capable of real love. You don't know what it is. But I do. I love Alita, and I'm not going to let you break her heart. Have a drink? Thanks. Hugo, have you ever been in love? Once I had a little dog. No, 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 no. I, I mean with a girl. Are you in love? Yes. 
Here. Oh. That's an interesting problem. You can fight. But you won't. You can desert. But I hardly think you will. Or you could do as Adolf did. You're doing that now. Efficiently. It can't be long before you meet a firing squad. In other words, you're a man without a future. I think I see what you mean. Today, we live and love. Tomorrow, a woman weeps. You have taken her happiness. I hadn't thought of that. Ah. <laughs> have a drink. Trouble? Yes, plenty of it. Worst of all, I'm in trouble with myself. About you. Sorry about last night? Very. Do something for me, Alita. Forget last night and me. W what's wrong, Bob? I'm a rotten soldier, Alita, and not much of a man. Find someone like, like Fred. Somebody who's everything I'm not. I couldn't. I only love you, Bob. But don't you see, there's no way out for us. But there must be. There's my ambulance. We could reach the Swiss border by nightfall. I've got a pass that'll take us through the line. Oh, but that's desertion. But it's our only chance for happiness. It wouldn't work. Oh, we'd be hiding and ashamed. Now you'll come through all right. And someday you'll wonder why you ever loved a crazy American who doesn't even belong here. I'll never wonder, Bob. I'll know. I think I have some interesting news for you, Lieutenant. Yes? Yes. The United States has declared war on Germany. Bad news for Germany. And for you? Yes. But of no consequence. Germany is my country. Well spoken. You know where Wilson is? Why? Oh, I thought he might be interested in the news. I... I think so, sir. Bring him here immediately. Yes, sir. Ray! Where women are concerned, you've always been a cheat and a liar. As for you, I thought you were different. And now you fall for the cheap line he spills to every woman he meets. See here, Fred, you can't get away with this. I thought you were decent. The only decent thing in the whole rotten war. But it's got you, hasn't it? And it's made you just as rotten as the rest. That's about enough out of you. You keep quiet and listen to me. We haven't got time to argue. Aldous wants you right now. What for? America has declared war on Germany. Goodbye, Lita. When you enlisted in the German army, you swore allegiance to the Emperor. Therefore, you have very little choice in the matter. 
You will fight for Germany or be tried for desertion with the inevitable consequences. Why waste your breath? You know what I'll do. Means your life. You can have it then. Lieutenant von Bergen, you will convey the prisoner to the rear where he will be held for court martial. Take off his sidearms. An amazing finish to a devoted friendship. Well, it's taken me a few years to find out that you're just a grandstander. What do you mean by that? I'm beginning to find you out, that's all. All this bravery act you've been putting on, just to hide your cowardice from yourself. So I'm yelling. You are. If you were standing alone in the center of this field, you wouldn't have the nerve to make a run for that plane and try to escape. What a pal you've turned out to be. And I admire the way you gave up Alita. I don't expect you to understand. When I said goodbye to her, I meant it. And she's as unspoiled now as she was when I met her. You expect me to believe that? Have it your own way, then. It took a woman and a war to break up our friendship, didn't it? You're a coward. A rotten liar and a coward. Don't say that again. Coward, liar! Like he's going to land. Send out a detail to pick him up. Warn the men not to take any chances. This might be a trick of some kind. Yes, sir. Uh, relay information to division headquarters. Name, Robert Wilson. Rank, Lieutenant. Unit, 22nd Squadron German Air Force. Born in America. Yes, that's right. This is Captain Roberts, Intelligence Service. I advise you to answer him truthfully. I have nothing to hide, sir. How did you happen to enlist in the German army? Looking for excitement, I guess. I had a German pal who was enlisting. I didn't know what I was getting into. Lieutenant von Bergen, I'm half inclined to recommend a court martial for you. Your negligence is most suspicious. So I socked him, made a break, and here I am. Very interesting yarn, Wilson. Too bad we can't prove it. Perhaps we can, sir. Partially. You trained to be an American at war with Germany. Yes, sir. What do you know about the munition dump being guarded by Squadron 22? I know it's the largest concentration of munitions in this sector. There's enough death in that dump to wipe out an entire division. We've made over one of our bombers to look like a gotha. We're waiting now for someone to take it over who knows where he's going. The explosion of that munition dump will start a general advance in the sector, which will carry us well past your former base. Well, it's about time somebody started ending this war. I'm sick and tired of the whole mess anyhow. Okay. I'll lead your bomber over.
Charles report. Allied squadron G-110, left base, headed for this way. I have a feeling that your friend Wilson is leading this raid. The only way you can prove that you didn't deliberately let him escape is by shooting him down yourself. I shall be watching you.
We'll try and take his place, Mama, from there. We'll try and give you the happiness that he would have given you. When he went away, I prayed that my son might die, if he must, for some purpose. God has answered my prayer. May you never have to make such a prayer, my child. May your children be born to a time when war will be looked upon as a barbarous thing, when men will not be taught to kill each other like wild beasts, but taught to understand and help each other, not to death, but to life, and to the fulfillment of God's mandate. Peace on earth, goodwill to men.